79% of all presentations are completely boring. Pretty bad, huh? You might be wondering now, or maybe since your professional training started on how to make your way to special 21% who don't put you to sleep. My name is Hamna Aslam, and I'm here today with an easy to follow guide for you all to build your bridge towards being a wonderful presenter. Yes, a question may have arised in your minds that isn't this something which we have been preparing for in all of this course? Well, the answer to that is yes, it is. So what will you people get by listening to our little tattle? The least this will definitely do is to provide every one of you an easy approach to public speaking. And if everything goes according to plan, you get an idealistic example and a spectacular intermix of insight and amusement. So without any further ado, fasten your seatbelts because we are heading for the ride of a lifetime. Now, what we'd like you all to do is to judge these three books by their cover. Go to the link in the chat box and tell us who is most likely to be an engineer. Okay. It appears that majority of you voted for Satya Nadella. Yes, of course, he is the engineer. In fact, the current CEO of Microsoft. But here's something you might not have expected. That the other two are also renowned engineers. Although this might have been against what we all have been taught from childhood. But let's be real. Stereotypes do exist. And this mini survey was a prime example of what our mental image of engineers looks like. Even though engineers have a history. More like traditions. Of breaking stereotypes. But shockingly. No progress has been recorded on destroying the stereotypes of terrible presentations. Let us discuss the basic problems that are not alien to an engineer's presentation. Here we have four problems. A robotic voice. Listening to a constant frequency hurts the ears. So how can a monotone be amusing? Cluttered slides, which narrows down to the curse of knowledge. That we'll explain later. Losing your audience in the middle of presentation. Well, that's a complete blunder. Of course, speech fillers like ums and ahs. Now, Tayyab will provide you with some tricks to get over these problems. So here I am with some practical solutions for all of you. Monotonic voice. As per my knowledge, all of us are not robots unless Microsoft started spying on us. I mean, look at this guy. Put some shades on him and he's the part of intelligence agent. In that case, most of us are not robots. I mean, almost all of us can tell which squares contain the traffic lights. Spoiler alert, it's these three. So we have to show the audience that we are humans. We have emotions, feelings that we are not machines or even lizards for that matter. For emotions, we need energy in our voice, in our words. 
because the audience is like a mirror they reflect the energy you give to them so the way to do that is by intonation the ups and downs of voice for example i am saying today is my presentation and again today is my presentation you can imagine the difference even my words are same just like between a barren crag plain and a mountain valley view the latter is more breathtaking in the same way intonation is the beauty of voice cluttered slides engineers have what they call the curse of knowledge knowing a lot has its benefit but most engineers cannot sort the relevant information powerpoint should add to your speech not become it so we have to see what does the audience focus at of course the keywords so in which of these pictures it would be easier to find something important obviously the right one because it is organized yes to make your slides organized you have to do something you have to set yes set sort your correct sort your content arrange it correctly and display it beautifully and for those who want more they can never ever show scattered stuff too or sadness losing the audience we have all been in presentations where the presenters gets so engulfed that even forgets people are listening throwing so much information that the audience can't even digest someone who would who would remind all of us of this so how to not be a yellow fluffy toy well we have to understand that each word matters so we should give our give every word its due time speak slowly this is not a race at least not one which you can win by speaking fast another thing you should focus on is to create engaging content keeping in mind the audience a playful and fun loving audience will not appreciate serious content no matter how insightful or brilliant it is hold their hand and cross the road with them amuse them give them something to enjoy and have and have fun with lighten the mood you know we are all stressed speech fillers confidence is not damaged by using arms and as sparingly but as it gets frequent things start to get tedious so what to do think quietly don't think with your mouth take a moment and the most important issue do not memorize memorization will make you stumble and fall and will turn out deadly for your presentation think thoroughly while preparing feel what you want to say speak your heart out if something comes from your heart it will reach the heart of your audience and think of the keywords as landmarks and do practice a lot of practice so this is where we part it was a wonderful time with all of you and so for correctly and i will now hand over to my colleague mr abdullah sabur thank you everyone my voice doesn't support me my legs start to tremble my legs give way and my head starts spinning all of this narrows down to the fact that i don't have enough confidence so fear not because i am here to help you get a hold of your nerves we all have this little fear inside of us that what if people don't listen to me so i am going to point the finger at you why should anyone listen do you have some sort of innovative insight some ground breaking conception or if not that much grandeur something worth of their time if someone was presenting the same stuff in front of you would you listen these kinds of questions must be asked to ensure the quality and the effect of your presentations as the father of american literature mark twain said a man cannot be comfortable without his own approval so okay you got your own approval your content is good what's the next step sounding confident 
unless you sound confident you can't so to sound confident we need pauses intentional pauses effective pauses because pauses are power they give your words the way they should have they draw the attention of your audience so don't just machine gun the words the pauses create suspense and thrill for your listeners and the most important don't try to copy anyone everyone has his own aura their own style whoops not that kind of style be yourself if you're jolly be jolly if you're reserved don't try to fake it you are a star each and every one of you don't let anyone take away your shine from you and while you look at this hypnotizing kaleidoscopic view i guess we have some time for a story this is a story about a young boy a boy who despised public speaking a boy who tried to give a speech many times what was met by bored faces and piercing eyes a boy who worked hard but never really touched the standard that very boy is speaking to you all right now be who you are and believe in yourselves and you will blow their minds thank you for listening why is it so important in engineer's life for 12 year a student keeps cramming until intermediate and then if even if after 4 years study in university he fails to uh, deliver uh, in front of the employer or to present in the meeting of the office then he got nothing it is a popular saying by the roskier drummond the mind is a wonderful thing it starts working the minute you are born and never stops until you get up to speak in the public but you do not need to fear because we are here to solve all your problems so we are not the bengali babas but we will try our best let me uh, i will request mr mazhar ali and our guest to take charge from here to increase your presentation skills there are some important factors which do matter in our presentation that is how we speak how we look and how we present while that is our verbal actions and non verbal actions the next so there are few important questions that we have to keep in our mind during presentation first one is where do we have to present because that matters a lot the first thing we have to do to this question is we have to understand the speech written we have to have a conversation with the organizer about the length of our speech about the about the length of audience and about the equipments which are to be used in our presentation now look at the two pictures on the right side of this slide do you see any difference in both pictures the answer is yes there is huge difference in both pictures there is difference in setting for speech in the first picture there is no special setting a boy is speaking in classroom and in front of his classmate who faces are familiar to him and there is no need of special arrangement while in the second picture huge member of audience are they are most faces are unfamiliar special arrangements are there so background work should be very strong in this situation so we have to understand the speech setting before coming to the presentation next three factors that we have to keep in our mind to how we have to present is that there is that is our speaking that is our voice that is our body language look at this pie graph there is margin of different factors look at the body language how important is this in our presentation we have to keep some factors in our mind that is self esteem that is confidence we have to do everything with confidence and we don't have to hesitate while presenting any next so our voice our language therapy and voice matters a lot our speed of voice our loudness of voice and all that our breath and pauses during our speaking matters a lot speed of voice and loudness of voice these two factors 
define our nervousness and authority on control and self-control as well. So we have to keep these factors under our control because our voice should deliver impression and emotion behind every word that we have to use. And we have to have some small breathes breathe during our presentation because if we don't breathe after del delivering some sentences, there will, be, there will be huge pause and that can distract our audience. Next. Our body language. Our body language affects a lot. Our body should reflect what we are going to say. Our body should deliver each and every word's impression through its action. So according to the handling Carter, our body reacts before we say any word. Before we deliver any word, it reacts and it delivers its impression. Next. So we now we have discussed some factors in our presentation. What we have to do during our presentation and where we have to do during our presentation. So what is the effective time and the crucial time during we have to use all these factors very effectively? So that is our introduction that we have to give a strong introduction and we have to leave a impactful impression on the audience. Now the question is why this is important? Because these first five minutes are going to define the interest of your audience. These first five minutes are going to gain or lose the attention of your audience. If we fail to gain the attention and interest, then nobody is going to come and understand our data and our presentation during the middle of our presentation. So we have to use all these factors in first five minutes with their intensity on peak. Thank you so much. This is all from my side. I request my colleague Filza. As we all know that as engineers, we have a lot of knowledge up in our heads, but for most of the world, this knowledge absolutely means nothing. So that's why when going to the meetings or conference in order to present something, make sure to analyze the audience we are presenting to. Now, in order to explore the audience in a proper way, we need to understand that how audience is going to judge us. Next, please. Basically, audience evaluates on what they hear, see from their eyes or what they hear from their ears and what are they expecting from you in their minds. Some of the basic thoughts run in our mind as soon as we thought about audience. Next, please. Like what our audience expect from us or what type of content they want from us. How do they want us to present? Are they satisfied with our content or what kind of mistakes they would probably point out or what is the criteria of the audience? Therefore, in order to avoid all these type of interrogative thoughts, we it's better to identify our audience and adapt our speech according to their interests and beliefs. Now, in order to do this, next please. Firstly, check the size of the audience. Larger the audience, more formal the presentation should be. Using everyday life when speaking to about only five to 10 people is appropriate. However, we need a well throughout structure when talking to 500 people. The next is demographics. Now, what does basically demographics means? It is an information of the audience related to their age, gender, class or education. These type of categories often underpin the person's experiences, so our speech should be tailored accordingly. Now, as we know that different audience have different expectations about the topic to be presented, if we just simply ignore this fact, it can have a very negative impact on our presentation. So, considering audience assumptions, 
help us to make better choices about how to present our content. Now, what does my audience already know or what do they need to hear from me? For this, we need to have a look for some background research. Like if our audience comprises of some general people. Next slide, please. Then a presenter can present in a simple and a general way. But if we face some knowledgeable or experts as our listeners, then we need to have a good and authentic content. But here question arises that how can we find such specific information? For this, we need to get some help of electronic media. Like if we are presenting at an industry event, research the event website, research reports and blogs, and familiarize yourself with the mission of the event. Next, please. Now the way you present our information can have a huge impact on the reaction of the audience. Some people just simply state facts and figures to have an impact. But is that really effective? Not if you want your audience to remember your message. Here I remember the day when I gave my first presentation. I'd love to say that I explained everything pretty well, but at the end, I didn't get such response from the audience which was I expecting in my mind. At that time, I don't know why it happened that way, but when I asked someone later, he just simply said, oh, you were just giving explanations. It was so boring. There was nothing much exciting about your presentation. So after that day, I learned from my experience that people love stories. Whether it's your personal story or anecdote, people are going to remember it for a long time. So whether delivering technical or non-technical presentation, next slide please. When we tell any story during our presentation, we can potentially activate up to seven areas of audience brains. Now researchers Dan and Chip Hell found that after a presentation, 63% of attendees remember stories, while only a small group of about 5% remember statistics. As we need to grab focus over spectators so that they hook to our presentation till the very end, for this we need to deliver our presentation in a very effective way. Next slide please. Now here I want to give you an example of the famous American author Diana Bohr. She is a communication expert and also the chief executive of the Boha Research Institute. In her book, Speak with Confidence, she describes the six steps to success or the six steps by which an engineer can become a professional and successful. Firstly, analyze the audience and determine their aim and purpose. Secondly, research and collect information related. Then organize all of your ideas and the material. Don't forget to add the finishing touches to the content and structure. Then prepare some supporting visuals. And lastly, practice how to deliver, including some kind of interactivity. So that's all from my side. Now I would request Atif Ali to carry on this presentation to conclusion. Every person is his own brand. What a brand is. It is sometimes some girls and even boys are very conscious about. So why not being conscious about your own personality, your first impression and ability to make more? Albert Einstein told that engineers are makers, so we are the one who is going to make a mark. So we should have such a potential person with presentation skill of extreme value that can help the person a lot. As the quotation of Albert Einstein is, scientists create what already is, engineers create that which have never been. These are the four key points as you see. Self-extreme and confidence, simply meaning having a high morale, a person with positive body language and optimistic at sky high goals. Personal appearance, that is the way you portray yourself, the way you look from head to toe, your living style. So these are the mirror of your personal appearance. Effective speaking, the statement you are making is leaving a strong impression on you in their mind. The word that you are speaking are resonating in the listener so they don't get fed up of your stance. Time management, as you know, a stage in time saves nine. Likewise, a person valuing his time is saving his generation from a choice. Time is money, and the one who values his time is never regretting. Next slide, please. 
employment criteria. First of all, no doubt, it's your CGPA, your academic sources. But now are there is these things like communication skill, discipline, confidence, and dedication lead to towards our job with price perspective. So we should develop these soft skills to pursue in our life. Next slide. I guess you all are now well aware of self-presentation perspective. So these are the two candidates who wants a job having saying CGPA, but let do some brainstorming. So the candidate who is productive has positive body language and are confidence. On the other hand, the candidate who is dull has bent posture and wrinkled dress. So it is obvious that company will hire a productive candidate, not a dull candidate. So we should be productive and not a dull one. Next slide, please. Public speaking as phobia, guys. Sometimes there is so much you can contribute towards a project in class discussion, but the fear of opening your mouth in front of 100 never lent you so blunt. I was started when I saw this graph that how the public speaking is a nightmare. People are much afraid from public speaking rather than their spider or hide. I report by Drew above. Now I am come up with the solution of all the dilemma we faced previously. So to overcome your public speaking, fear you know your topic well organized focus on material not audience and the main and foremost point is practice as practice make a man perfect no doubt before your presentation stand in front of mirror and then look at your body language don't be ambiguous about yourself speak as if you are leader and your words giving a strong impression and your personality too so always do practice as more as you can before coming to present next slide please my fellows, it's not too late. You can still improve that. Hope is always there. As the Marion Williamson said, it is not too late. You are not too old. You are right on time and you are better than you know. Next slide. Now, these are the things that will lead to a preferred person with high job chances and successful engineers. You can still work on yourself by keeping a good hygiene, good accent, even if you are talking to your fellows. So these are the things that are directly proportional to your personal presentation.